Snippy. Sun is out. It is still cold. Because I've had to wade through water, my uh, salad pits are sticking to the <laughs> the concrete. <laughs> I have only three rods out today. I have a big pollen, a rainbow trout, and a bluey. I'm going to give them all oil now in a minute, but just settling in and having a cup of coffee before I do anything because it's quite nippy. You might notice that I'm not wearing my brand new salad pets that I got for Christmas. Well, they've had to go back to the uh, shop. Putting them on and the uh, zip came apart in my hand. They're going back to the shop. They're too expensive to have things like zips fall the zip literally falling apart. The metal of the zip snapped. You know, and it wasn't even like a, you know, pulling it over a gut. It was, you know, putting it on and putting the two little zip bits together and then trying to zip it up. Yeah. So it's going back. So I'm going to get some, the, uh, the old ProLogic Mimicry is living on for another day, for a bit longer. Not fishing alone. There's a fella down here doing some uh, feeder fishing. And there's two guys from Antrim direction. They've they've made the trip down. So far, no fish. I've seen no fish on the bank, but there's fish rising. So that means that there's prey fish here, which is good. It's just very very cold, so just have to get past that. Unfortunately, when it's this sort of temperature, when it's this cold. Bad scopes would be using light bit. A nice big half pound rainbow trout would catch fish today. Something kicking out, making a lot of noise, would be a definitely catching fish today. But I came down here because I'm opposite the Balnalek Marina, hoping that the marina is holding some prey fish, which it is. The pike will be far away from the prey fish. So. Although the sun is out, it is still really, really cold. You know, it is really, really cold. There's a good half inch of ice that I had to break through to get to the, the uh, jetties where I'm fishing, so... And that's not thawing, you know. You might also notice that I have a replacement Delcom. I got it online. I got it from... I got a replacement. I also got a new replacement bank stick and stuff like that there, so it's good to have it back up and running again and back to full strength as it was. But I'm only fishing three rods today, so I don't need that one out. Beautiful day, flat calm, perfect conditions. And fishing bits, uh, apart from the pollen, the pollen will be popped up. The other two bits will be hard on the bottom. I'm going to show you a rig later on that I've made uh, something I've designed in my head that you fish with a sunken float rig and it's um, I'm road testing it at the minute and so far it's doing okay there's just some little kinks that I have to work out uh, but I'll run through it and I'll show you guys it but for the time being, I'm going to get some oil and syringes, get some oil and bits, make another cup of coffee, and then we'll see where today goes, shall we? Let's put some oil in these bits. Is that clipped into there? 
Okay. That's a first. I hadn't done that. Okay. Untangled. I'm using a five ounce lashing on the line to be using a six ounce lead to hold the bottom today because it's moving quite fast. That is a nice rainbow trout. Let's just hook it a different direction. I have it hooked head up the trace, so it'll be lying on the bottom like that there, and the flow will be taking it. So if it's just kind of moving up and down the flow like that there, the pike will pick it up. It doesn't really matter, you can have it head up or tailed up, or it doesn't really matter. Right. Right, get some holes in it, just to make sure that it's able to leak out all the juice. That is what you want. I'm going to pump this full of salmon oils. Here we go. No, we're not wanting to cast it too far, we're just wanting to flick it out into the middle of the river. There you go. And that is us on the bottom, it's quite deep here. So we're just going to wind, wind down nice and tight, and then set it back up into the the dropper or the road pod. And that rod is ready to rock and roll. Do the same with the pollen, then I'll do the same with the bluey. But the bluey is getting spicy mackerel oil, so Whew. come on the pike. Still nippy. I think it's just went to about negative one. The sun's getting up, it's kind of defrosting little bits of the grass, but Cup of coffee number three. Days like this, you just have to keep the hot beverages going in. You hear the cows in the field? That's cow speak for fuck me, it's cold. <laughs> so, did you all survive New Year okay? It's a quiet one in the Scobie household, very quiet. They did the usual stay up to, I was in bed by like 10 past 12. It's a bit strange though, when, because uh, I'm not sure if you all know or seen it, but the wife and I are expecting our first child. We told the families on Christmas day, you know, cue lots of tears and celebration. And on Christmas Day, I got absolutely plastered drunk. <laughs> Rode off drunk. Celebrating. You know, it was a bit bit strange, you know, having... Because obviously you don't tell people as soon as your wife conceives. You, you wait till you get, like, a scan, because there's so much that can go wrong. Especially in the early stages. So the wife surprised me, and, you know... I'm genuinely looking forward to being a dad. So, start of July 2021, baby Scoby will be arriving. So I'm looking forward to that. My mother is absolutely clocking to be a grandmother. <laughs> she has been, she has been wanting a grandkid for a long time. Both me and her brother are married, and her mother will always kind of you know, say you. Know, when are you giving grandkids to me? <laughs> no. But it's a good end to a truly shit year. Like I say, I'm genuinely looking forward to being a dad. So we'll see how that goes in July. 
other than that, I did do a session after Christmas, but it was colder than this. The road that I drove down was like an absolute ice rink. I got parked up and fished for three hours, and then I thought, nah, it's time to get out of here, so I thought I'll change, change location. And, you know, a couple hundred yards of road took me nearly half an hour to drive down because it was that slick. So, I just said, hell with it and go home. I love fishing. I don't, well, I don't want to be crashing the van and stupid stuff like that. So, this is the first session of 2021. Opposite me at Balnalek Marina, they're doing a lot of uh, renovation work, putting in new jetties for the boats. Which isn't really going to be good for the, the guys that fish this stretch, because it's going to push boats further out into the water. Which means boats travelling the water will be cutting to this bank a lot closer. So you already have a problem with boats you know, cutting close to anglers fishing. So it's just going to be more boats on top of anglers got to keep the boat people happy. Yeah. Paid my licenses as a good person should. Genuinely don't know where our money goes that we pay license fees for. So I've been speaking with the Ulster Ulster Angling Federation and they basically said that the money goes into a civil service black hole and nobody knows where it goes. Knowing this dumb country, they'll probably go in a brown envelope to somebody to keep somebody happy. So I think this year I'm going to ask my elected representatives to uh, tell me exactly where my license fees go because I pay quite a lot of license fees. Not as much as I used to when I was uh, salmon angling, but I pay considerable license fees. All anglers in Northern Ireland do. So it'd be nice to know where those money go, where that money goes. Last I was, last time I was chatting about this, there was people that said that the money goes to the, the, the uh, DERA, the country, the people that's in charge of angling. That there's certain amounts of money goes to, in the form of grants to commercial anglers. So in a roundabout way, the rod and line pleasure angler is paying for the destruction of their sport by giving money to the net anglers, the commercial guys. Yes, there's still commercial netting on the Loch Earn. They've stopped it apparently on the upper lock. There's none on the river apparently, but it's only the lower. Now this is where it gets complicated. The trout guys want the pike removed. Just like the trout guys down in Mask and Corrib. But you kind of extend to them, you know, the pike aren't the problem. But you could talk to that tree in front of me, and the tree would probably understand it a bit better. If I can go and catch double figure trout on a regular basis as a pike angler, then there is no problem with trout on Locker. When I explain that to trout anglers, they, they don't believe me. There's trout anglers out there that actually don't believe I catch trout. Even though that I put it on video. You know, that little uh, that little fish about six pound I had on the lower lock recently. Somebody actually argued with me that I was throwing uh, little trout lures. Not a eight inch lump of mackerel. What can you do with these people? Certain people just don't listen, don't want to listen. But that's life. What else has happened recently? The New Year's Eve, again, didn't stay up very late, very quiet. So I don't really like drinking by myself. Usually, if the wife was, you know, when the wife, if the wife wasn't pregnant, we'd had a, she'd had a couple of glasses of wine and a few beers. But 
none of that this year. It's our first year in our new house. So it's a year of firsts. 2020 has been shit, but it hasn't been that really, really shit. Bought a house. Knocked up the wife. So 2020 has been interesting. I watched the uh, BBC countdown thing on New Year's Eve. And it showed the London fireworks. And I just thought, what a waste of money. You're the mayor of London, Sadiq Khan, putting up black power fists. London doesn't represent the UK, I don't think. I think London's lost. Seeing Black Lives Matter stuff isn't. It's just boring now. It's like the COVID-19. It's just boring now. But. Hopefully now that Brexit's over. Thankfully Brexit's over. The government can start. Uh, focusing on things closer to home. Like the BBC. The sooner it gets defunded. The licence fee gets took off it. The better. I don't pay the licence fee. Refuse to fund the BBC. But I'm going to drink this and then I'm going to discuss some rigs with you. A few moments later. I'm going to discuss a rig with you. This is the one I've been uh, working on. This is it here. This is for quite big bits. And as you can hear, it rattles. There's some little veins in this. So it turns. It rattles, makes a lot of noise. This is 60 pound American fishing wire bleeding leader. On one end, you have a clip that you clip to your uptress. Uh, I fished this with a sunken float pad, now it's the rig, so the lead's anchored on the bottom. This is up in the middle of the water and it's spinning away. And on the back, you have your bait. Now, as you can see by the hooking arrangement, I'm fishing with a large bait here. This hook is only for uh, basically lip hooking the bait, you'll push it through its nose and these two will just nip into its flank. It'll be kept suspended in the water flow in the middle of the flow and this will just keep turning, making a lot of noise, attracting the pike. It works very very well on deep fast moving water like what we have in front of us. Unfortunately, I don't think I'm not going to try it today because there's just too much going on. There's other anglers here, there's, you know, I like to tinker with rigs like this, you know, when I have like spare time and there's nobody beside me. So I can throw this out and basically observe how it's working. Because this is buoyant, it's going to keep the bait up, you know, so you could use quite a big, a big bait, you could use like a big mackerel, you know, so that this is going to keep it off the bottom anyway. The pike come in to, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll hear the rattling, they'll feel the vibration of the rattling in the water, and they'll have a wee, uh, let's go and have a look at this, shall we? So, they'll come in. And they'll, see, they'll hear this, this'll, this'll be the source of the rattling. And then they'll see the bit, and hopefully they smash up the bit. I've been experimenting with longer lengths, shorter lengths, lighter wire. Um, I found the heavier the wire, the better it worked. Light wire tended to tangle on me. Uh, so, that's, like I said, this is 90 pound AFW wire and bleeding leader. These are size two owner trebles. And that's say size, to, uh, I think it's just a worm hook, with the plastic worms. So, that is my Rattling River Rig. It would also work if you're trolling it. In fact, the times that I've had success with it has been um, fishing it off a boat. So. For trolling, it's really, really good. Um, 
I would fish, not fish this with a sunken float if I was trolling this. If I was trolling this, I would be fishing it with like a bottom bouncer style. Now, bottom bouncing is, think like a ledger rig, you know, but instead of like a normal like six ounce lead like I'm using here, you only use like a half ounce lead, just enough lead to sink the bit to the bottom. And as you're slowly chugging along in your boat, the little half ounce lead's keeping the bit on the bottom. And this is up, this is up about maybe a foot, two feet off the bottom. And it's making its noise and it's rattling and twisting and flashing and tracking everything. And that's, that's how it's working. Now this is a medium size in this. I have the small size and I have the large size. Large size is a beast. So I'm tinkering with it. I'm always tinkering with different rigs. I'm always trying to make rigs better. You know, if somebody caught to me and said, you know, this is how I fish, this is how I use my rigs. I'm always paying attention to that because I don't know everything. So I could be fishing somewhere and somebody could come up and show me something new. And it could be, I'm going to try that, that's good. It's uh, the same same thing when I, since I've actually seen somebody using uh, rig tubing. Uh, they're fishing on the River Shannon down in the south. Uh, I was feeder fishing for hybrids, so it wasn't pike fishing, but this guy was pike fishing. But the zebra mussels were cruel, you know, you were having to change your shock leader every 10 casts. They were just destroying you. It was good, good fishing, but terrible place. He was having problems with his pike gear getting shredded. So he started to like, explain to me that he used like a heavier shock leader, like a mono, big, I think it was 80 pound mono uh, snag leader. And eventually the zebra mussels were nipping at it. And then he caught up with the whole rods up high and stuff like that there. And the two of us were sitting chatting. And I said, well, maybe the carp rig tubing would work. And it was like a light bulb goes off in your head. It was like, that would work. And since then I've been using it. And even in places like this where there isn't really any zebra mussels here, you know, it's a pretty silty, muddy bottom here. But you still, I'm still using the rig tubing. I'm still basically keeping the rod tip up a bit. So it's only the last little bit of the line is touching the bottom where the rig tubing is. Just to try and get your stuff zebra muscle proof. You know, I look back to the days when I was a kid starting pike fishing and you were using like 18 pound, you were using like 15 pound Maxima mono. You were using 30 pound brick and strain wire. You know, which wasn't bad. I mean, I still use 30 pound brick and strain today. But because of the zebra mussels, a lot of my gear has just been beefed up. You know, instead of using 15 pound mono, I now use 20. You know, instead of 30 pound braid, I now use a 50 pound or 60 pound or 80 pound braid even. You know, you, your attitudes change as you learn. So you end up thinking, if I can cast something out, no matter what happens to it, I want to be able to bring that back in. I don't want to leave gear on the bottom. Don't want to leave stuff, you know, on the deck, so it could basically kill fish. It's like um, last year when I fished across in the marina, and the idiot came in with the boat and started to do donuts over the rods, and took half a spool of line off one of the rails and broke me off. One of my good friends, uh, Andrew, he actually found that oh, like a week later. He was fit to kind of send me a picture of him holding up my ball of line by trace and a rotting bait so thankfully that you know that fish was never that bait was never at by anything it never hurt a pike but you know you're this is why I try not to fish around areas that's got lots of boat traffic because you end up getting you know idiots and boats not all boat owners are idiots but there's a high percentage I would say half of them are just about right about that. But the sun is getting up and it's actually quite nice on your face, the sun. But it's not thawing anything out. <laughs> it's not a very uh, strong sunshine, it's just there. Everything that'll be in the shade of the sun will still be frozen solid. So, rattling river trolling rig let me know what you think of it you know obviously if you think it's shit then do tell me but, but uh, 
you know, constructive criticism is better. If you just kind of come on and say, comments and say that's that's dog shit scopes, you know, then the chances are I'm probably not going to respond to that. You know, I do make a point of trying to respond to all comments, but if you're just on to give me abuse, then you know, I probably won't respond to you. That's like all this. It's like all this stuff on the YouTube. I mean, I I do try to kind of respond to the comments I get. I get asked a lot of questions, and that's cool. I mean, I'm I'm all for you know folk asking questions, and all the questions I get, I, I do tend, I do try and answer them. You know, I I do. You know, I'd, if I can help, I try and help. That's the ice cracking. <laughs> Every now and then you hear like a, a bang, that's just the ice cracking. Might change the bits, I might put on a big eel. Take the bluey off. Don't know, give it the other hour, then we'll see what we go. See how we go. I'm not sure if the GoPro is picking this up, but since breaking this and walking through it a couple of times to get the ice cleared at the road, you can see the tiniest of skims of ice where the ice is reforming. That tells you how cold today is. It's uh the ice is a good half inch thick. You know, it's a decent thickness of ice. I'm just trying to kick it down here. So every time I come down here, I kick a bit more. Kick a bit more this way, just to get out of the road. On this rod, I have the bluey. It's going to get some spicy mackerel. So, let's get this in and let's get it put back out again. But it's a beautiful day. Flat Cam River, although it is definitely moving. Like I said, six ounces is holding the bottom. But let's get some pike. Time for something to eat, I think. So today we're gonna have a steak. I got a couple of these little sirloin steaks. I'm gonna cut hopefully gonna one's gonna do me a sandwich between the two bits of bread, so I don't want my I don't want my pan that hot. I want it just hot enough so that I can get a good sear on. You don't cook these for too long. They're pretty small. I need my tongs and I need my my knife. <sighs> Stick. Gotta look after yourself. These are like two for seven quid out of Tesco's. So I'm not expecting, you know, filet me on, you know. Gordon Ramsay special. I'm just expecting a nice, honest lump of steak. Try not to make a mess. Too many utensils. And it will fit in the pan. Result. Now, I'm not going to let it cook for a long time. I just want it to, uh, to sear, basically, or seal it. Then I'm going to slice it nice and fine. And put it into a sandwich. Got some nice brioche bread. So, steak sandwiches for breakfast. You have to look after yourself on a day like this. Not already smells awesome. 
<laughs> It'll be my luck now that I'll get a run. It did have what I thought was a run, but it was a big ball of weed that came floating down the river and took out the two rods in the pod. So I just there's no marks on the bait, so just punted them back out to where they were. I smell that steak so I still make him a mouth water. But I cook this and then I'll get back to you. A few moments later. The thing about steak that I find I tend to like my steak blue, but if it's a sirloin, I like the fat kind of so that the fat's kind of crispied up, crisped up. So I'll take the fat, or take the steak, and put a fat end into the pan and stand it up so that, that it's fat, it's getting nice and cooked through, but the steak still remains kind of blue. Hard to do on a Coleman stove, but you don't cook it for long. And you end up with delicious steak. Now I'm going to cut this in half, slice it nice and fine, chopping board. And then I'm going to put it into my bread, and that's going to be my breakfast. Put the kettle back on the boil, so I'll have a cup of coffee with it. More moments later. Okay, I would say that's medium rare. I'm going to have to slum it. Medium rare steak sandwiches. What's the man going to do? One eternity later. Right. Please don't be weed. I think it's. I think this is weed. Because I don't feel anything. No. Weed. I must be stuck. It's what's coming down the river, you see. Yeah, it was a tree. It was a tree. So I've uh, straightened out the two hooks on the trace, pulled it out of a tree. The rod that I've got on the rod, the rods in the rod pod, just got wiped out by a big tree. So this is the problem when you're going to fish places that are natural rivers. If there's flooding, you don't know what's been washed down. But it goes to show you the importance of using strong gear. That's one of the trebles. And it's just been pulled straight out. Now that came back with a lump of branch. The second rod came back and the trebles were at the same sort of shape as this. So there's a big lump of dead tree that's been washed down into the river and anchored itself. When I was pulling the rod, pulling the line, you could feel it coming. You know, so it's it's obviously not stuck in the mud yet, so it's just going to keep on going down, but this is a testament to why you use strong gear. What time is it? Well, it's quarter past two. I'll fish to about half three, then take a drive home. No runs, just trees. I've swapped out the bits. On the top rod, I've got a big herring. Then I've got a smelt, and then I've got a a big roach. So, 
hoping that maybe something fancies the eye of the pike, but can't believe that. Ah well, there's not much I can do if it's uh, stuck in trees. First session of 2021. It's been a fucking cold day. Although my thermal boots have definitely lasted. The feet are okay. Everything else is my retention things froze solid. <laughs> so, yeah. What a day. <laughs> I think it's time to call it a day. The sun's heading down, so I think it's time to disappear home and have something to heat me up because it's just been a nippy one today. Definitely a cold one. Lots of debris and flotsam and jetsam coming down the uh, system. So it's been difficult to to fish without the rods getting wiped out. That bit's only just been put out about an hour ago, so I think I might just keep it. Apparently last night, one of my friends lives in Oma, was saying that the weather dropped down as far as minus nine. And I can believe that. He has like a sundial thing in his back yard that tells him what temperatures went to. So minus nine. Sounds a bit, sounds a bit right. So, first session on a really cold river urn. And it has been a blank. There's Loca Crussell, flooded, well flooded and froze solid, cold.